John Davis, and I am pleased to announce uh, our, or introduce our speaker for today. But before we do that, let me remind you that, that this is an every week thing. Uh, if you'd like to be a presenter, we want to hear your presentation. All you need to do is, is reach out to Chassa. Uh, Whitney Cave will be on the other end of the email that you send, wcave at chassa.org. Um, and she'll get you linked in on how to sign up to present. If we could keep this going all year, it would be awesome. Uh, so we look forward to more presentations from students. Students, there's also an advisor presentation that, that uh, goes off on Wednesday afternoons at four o'clock. And so if you'd like to know more about that, again, jump on the Chassa website and you can find out about those advisor presentations which, which students are more than welcome to attend. So student presenters on Tuesday night at six and advisor presentations uh, on Wednesday at 4 p.m. Join us for those and bring a friend, right? Uh, if, you're, if you're remote, we'd love to have you. So please uh, join us. So with that, let me introduce you to one of Durango High School's finest, Jay Pruitt, talking about effective communication. Jade, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Rashawn. So my name is Jade. Obviously, I go to Durango High School. Um, I'm a senior this year. I'm a state rep. In my high school council, I am the executive co-president. I've been on council for four years. It's something I truly love, and hopefully you guys being here means that you love it too, and you like being a student leader. Um, today, I'm, I'm just going to text yeah. Trump's client and be like, Ellie and I can't stay for the whole Zoom. Okay, um, I am going to be talking about communication today, which, believe it or not, we're all really good communicators in order to be leaders and be in the positions that we're in today, we have to be able to communicate, um, whether you are the best at communication or you are adequate at it. Uh, it's what led you to be on student council, right? You had to interview, you had to run for a position. That's communication. And I think communication is just foundational to all leader leadership. Um, it's something that I've constantly heard um, being brought up in student council, but also in my classes for the past four years and probably my entire life. And so today I'm going to talk about three like really key things I think every leader and every communicator needs to be able to do. And then afterwards, we can totally talk about more communication if you guys would like. So before I begin, I would really like you to take a quick minute and reflect on your biggest struggle as a communicator in the area of communication that you really, really want to work on or that you think needs improvement and needs growth. And I'll give you like a minute because I don't think that is too deep of a reflection. But yeah, just take a minute to think about where in your communication you want to grow and what challenges you face. Okay, hopefully that is enough time to reflect and just kind of get you started about thinking about your communication and your skills. And now I'm going to dive into the three really key elements of communication that I think are necessary. And the first one is listening. And I think this is something that I'm about communicating when I think about communication, it's almost like definition of communication or but this thing is the end of that. If you can't listen for speaking, it doesn't matter what they say if you can't listen effectively. And listening is definitely something that I have worked on as a communicator, as a person in my daily life. And I think the key of those things is listening to understand and not to respond. So when you're listening, I think it's really important to listen to what you need as a communicator. Um, you have to really understand what they're saying. You're saying, oh, I don't like that idea, or that has to be done before. I'm just kind of pretending to say that I move on. Um, you have to really be willing to 
to accept ideas and to listen to them. And if you're not listening to understand, then you're not really listening. Uh, I always forget is I was in a ton of Socratic seminars. Sometimes you're encouraged to talk and share your opinions, but I was always in the mindset of I want to hear what they say and I want to beat what they're saying and I want to say something better. And the key to communication is not doing that. That is wrong. That's really bad. Um, the key to communication is listening to them and truly understanding what they're saying and trying to like make my argument better because I understand what they're saying. Uh, this year, we are put into a crazy situation, this pandemic, and it's completely unprecedented. There's no history of There's no pandemic, really. I got to go back to the 1900s, but for these unprecedented times, and one of the brains that we can do is utilize our customers and use. It says my speaker is not working. Can you guys hear me? You are coming in and out on us. Uh, we're working on it. Sure. I'm going to stop my video and hopefully it works better. Okay, I'll keep going and I don't know. Please don't know. Um, you're still, you're still okay. Sick. Are you sitting near your uh, your wireless device, your router? Yes. That usually helps a little bit. You sitting against a wall? Yeah. Yeah, you back off the wall a little bit, probably. Okay. Always works, Dale. <laughs> okay, let me know if this is better. Jade, Mike, you're on mute, kid. Hang in there, everybody. We're going to get this worked out. Jade, you are on mute right now. Yes. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Let's give it a try. Through. Sorry. I tried moving. Can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you. Go ahead, kid. Okay, sick. So sorry about that, you guys. Um, Durango internet is shoddy at best, so I'm so sorry. But I guess finishing up my talk about listening, we are in a transition as students. Open our ears to new ideas and to new possibilities. You know, of homecoming and the events that we've always had can't happen in the same way. It stinks that maybe we don't have the same graduation or prom that we did in the past, but that doesn't mean we can't make a move from there. My second point about communication is positivity. And this is something that has been preached to me since I was in elementary school. And one of our six P's, um, which included being prompt and prepared, was a PMA, or positive mental attitude. And trust me, look at the PMA, and check off your list and you are done. You've done it. However, being positive takes daily work. You have to come to each situation positive solutions. However, being a positive leader is so, so important. It takes work, but it is really, really important. Um, positivity is how you can get people to participate and be involved and be excited about what you're doing, truly. Um, right now, to say that we're doing, it's important that I say positive. That have enthusiasm to me. And not care about it, I think you would not care about it, you know? Um, so I think when we're being leaders and we're communicating, we have to have the excitement about what we're doing 
And when we're excited, our student body is going to be excited and our principals are going to be excited and our advisors are going to be excited. It's hard to feel like you're making people invested in a project, but I promise approaching things with positivity is what's really going to make people excited about what you're doing. And it's going to get other people on your bus, if that makes any sense. Finally, I'm going to be talking about knowing your audience. So as a communicator, you learn that communicating to a student, communicating to a superior, communicating to a parent, it's all different. I'm not going to try to answer your hand, and that's not a bad thing. It's just I'm going to what truly means what high school in Colorado. Hey, Jade. Jade. Yeah. Okay. Can we do this? I apologize. And and for our audience, if you'll hang in there, we're going to get through this. Uh, but Jade, if you can jump out and try and rejoin this group, and let's see if we can work on it that way, just real quick. Uh, Whitney's okay, yeah, that. sorry. No worries, it's not on you, kid. Uh, yeah, to our audience, hang in there, because this is, is definitely great stuff. We appreciate our, our students stepping up to, to volunteer. And again, if you want to, um, it's as simple as reaching out uh, to Chasa and letting them know what you want to present on and getting on the schedule. So um, hopefully you're, you're interested in doing that and sharing what's going on at your school or uh, something that you would uh, imagine is a great leadership strand for kids to grow in. Um, so hopefully you'll do that. Dale, what's going on down there in Durango, man? Well, you know, as, as, as uh, Jade was saying, you know, we're, we're trying some new things. We're actually trying to do three different schools at the same time. We're doing all remote and blended and full time. And um, what I'm finding, you know, when you talk about a leadership lesson is that the students are really stepping up. Uh, and actually, you know, when we, when we came up with this, we, we really were kind of, you know, curious or, or real, kind of a little scared about how the students were gonna perceive this, but we've, uh, and Jade's been part of this, you know, communicating out the, the need for us to be um, cognizant of, of, you know, wearing masks and things like that. And so it's, it's worked out really well. And I've been really proud of the students, how they've responded to, to the challenges. Well, and, and as the advisor for a number of years down there, and of course, congratulations, <laughs> you guys continue to be a gold council of excellence. Yeah. Uh, you're our national association. Um, that sounds awesome. How, how, yeah. How's that working out with kids in blended and, you know, uh, online and all of that? How's it working out? Yeah, it's, it's, it's been, and I'm, I'm sure, you know, I'm preaching to the same group that's probably going through some of the, the other, uh, the same situations. It's like, how do you, how do you try to maintain a sense of spirit and a sense of enthusiasm and, and that kind of thing? It's, it's, it's been really challenging for us to, to kind of do that. So, what, what Jade is, what, what's really been testing us is the, one of the points that Jay's making is this positivity thing, you know, because there's, there's all sorts of reasons, you know, I think as a leader that you can always find a reason to not be positive. And so the mark of a really, a real true leader is how, how are you positive when it's the hardest to be that, if, if I can end, end the sentence with that. So, yeah, um, absolutely. so it's, it's a growth experience. It's a, it's a real growth experience for us. Absolutely, as I'm sure some of our student guests would 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 tell us, right? Um, mm -hmm. we're, we're working on getting Jade back in. Um, yeah. Ah, there she you is. <laughs> yes. Welcome back. Perfect. Okay. I'm so sorry about my mic problems, but Durango is a little bit out of the way, so <laughs> this is a challenge I've faced all summer. Um, Thank you, Dale, for talking about positivity. That's mm -hmm. definitely, obviously, something that, you know, entire schools, it's not just a student leader thing that you have to be positive. Um, so yeah, I would always encourage you to work on your positivity. And my final point was knowing your audience. 
and as student leaders, we're really put in a particular situation where we're communicating with a ton of different groups. Um, I think in my council, at least, we have a really good relationship with administrators. So we're talking to our principal and to our, our, our athletic director um, just as frequently as we're talking to our advisor, Dale, or as we're talking to our student body. Yet those situations call for different types of communication. At our school, our principal really preaches inclusivity and his biggest goal for Durango High School is to be the top public high school in the state. And so when we're talking to Mr. Hurl about our projects and about the events we're putting on, we're making sure that we're putting on inclusive events and we're putting on events that are going to make DHS look good and just be a better school for kids to attend. But when we shift our focus and we're communicating with students, we're making posters and social media posts. And especially right now, one of our big ideas is inclusivity and making sure that kids have, even if it's little events and it's not something as big as homecoming, making sure they have events where they feel as if DHS is their home and that they're welcome there and that they're part of a larger community that cares about their well being. And I guess my point of all this is that despite using different communication models and recognizing that students have different goals than administrators, obviously Dale's going to have a different goal. He wants our student council to succeed and he's there working with us to make that happen. By communicating in different ways and really appealing to different people, we can get more people excited about what we're doing, more people on our bus, more people to coming to more events because they realize that we care for them and we're appealing to them. Uh, this is the same thing when you are putting on an event such as homecoming, you may realize that those really big generic events may be missing a lot of like smaller populations. One event that we put on at DHS is a rail jam, which was a skiing competition because Durango is a ski town and ski kids, you know, they may not want to spend their weekend at a dance. They want to spend it skiing. So we put on a skiing event because we realized that that was a different audience we could be reaching. Um, and I think my final point about all this is just being able to know your audience can get them really involved. Same way positivity can, but it can also make you more affected and more respected if you're coming to your administrators with different values and different ideas than you are to your student body. So just to recap, because I was cutting out, basically my key points about communication are being able to listen, being able to be positive and know your audience. You need to be able to understand ideas, think positively about new and exciting challenges and present these ideas to a multitude of people. As a student leader, you are in an extremely unusual um, but amazing position where you can reach a really wide audience. So as we face this peculiar time, I encourage you to try and really like embrace all that this time has to offer and all the new ideas and all the challenges. And you may remember at the very beginning, I asked you to reflect on your communication and the area that most needed work. And hopefully I touched on it. Obviously I only brought up three key points, but maybe I brought something up that you really wanted to work on and maybe I gave you some ideas for how to do that in your council. If I didn't, please put it in the chat box and I will talk about communication. I'm not the greatest expert in the world, but I think we have a great amount of student leaders and obviously leaders from Chasa that can really provide insight and help you guys through this crazy time. That's exactly what we're talking about, but we've got some questions. So I'm gonna throw a couple of questions at you. And if, if Dale, if you could do us a favor and put Jade's contact information in the chat box, that would definitely, would definitely help us. So Jade, you ready for some questions? Yes. So first, you know, while we talk about communication, can you be very specific about something that you do at Durango to start the school year that, that, that helps you to understand who is on your campus? How do you know that? How do you know who you're serving? Yeah, that's an absolutely terrific question. I think this year has definitely been different. 
Um, some things that our student council has done in the past, we generally help out with our demon day, which is a day where we welcome new freshmen. And so that's a day where we can really get to know the new faces of our school, because obviously that's a community that needs tapping into. Um, they're new, they don't know DHS, and so we want to be inclusive with that. We also have social media, and I think one of the big things that we're trying to push out right now is getting people to follow our Instagram and our Snapchat and our newly made TikTok because that is, you know, a big platform that kids are on nowadays, and not necessarily right now, um, but over time we do polls and we talk about different themes that kids are interested in and types of events they want to see, and we truly listen to that feedback. This year has been certainly extreme um, and extremely different, but we have several committees that are really working on um, just little activities and events, ones more so tied into mental health and just kind of positivity and service learning projects, but their goals are to really put out a diverse range of creative, fun little events that students can really participate in, um, no matter where they're coming from and we're not breaking social distancing rules. I think that's one of our biggest challenges. And so that this year it's including things like tie-dyeing t-shirts and that not only gets them involved in spirit because we are doing like spirit t-shirt tie-dye, I guess, if that makes any sense. Um, and then also some other ideas are like a trick or treat drive where we can reach out to more youth in our community. Um, Things like cookie decorating or, you know, a screen that projects the football game because only a certain amount of people are able to come this year and um, encouraging more people to come to the sports games that are going on. Uh, you know, tennis, softball at DHS, our tennis and softball teams actually happen to be really good. And so it's just kind of encouraging people to try new things. And over time, I think we figure out who our big audiences are throughout the year. Awesome. And, and for those who don't know, can you tell us a little bit about the makeup of your school? And actually, maybe some of us don't even know where Durango is. So can you fill us in? Yeah, that is a terrific question. And I totally get that all the time. Uh, Durango is actually in the southwest corner of our state. It's right by the four corners, which, if you are unaware, is where Colorado uh, New Mexico, Utah, and Arizona meet in like a perfect four corners according to like state maps and stuff. Super cool. Um, we have, you know, it's just an awesome community. Like I said, it's a ski town, but we also have a large rural population. We have a local school, um, Fort Lewis College. I would highly request looking into it. Durango is a beautiful town and it's a great um, college to go to. Uh, in terms of DHS, we have around 1,300 students. Uh, it's, you know, 9th through 12th grade, tons of awesome kids. We offer tons of activities. Um, our student council has been a gold council of excellence for the past decade. I think Rashawn kind of mentioned that, and that just means our council, we try to do a lot, and we try to include a lot of people and do a lot of really cool things. Uh, our advisor who's on here, Dale, has been advising for Ever. He's been the mayor of Durango. He, um, you know, goes scuba diving and he's just an awesome person. And so we have a great community and all of our events, I think, are pretty traditional. Obviously, we do homecoming and prom and um, winter formal and graduation and all those big student council events. But we're also constantly seeking to do fun and engaging events and just kind of like really tie in the community. Uh, Dale just chatted me and he mentioned one of our activities which is DHS rocks which is super cool it is a talent show we throw at our school and classes pay to go it's not a super high fee to go um, teachers sometimes make it a competition so whichever class raises the most might get pizza or have a test a later day and all the money goes towards a fund a fund at DHS that we provide to DHS families. So it could be to buy food, it could be to pay rent, it could be to help buy a winter jacket, but it is to go to DHS families who are in need and that account gets replenished all the time. Last year we actually made 
some news, I don't know which morning news it was, but it was an image of one of our students, his name is Cole, he's a special needs kid, um, and they do a special like roller coaster event during our talent show, and he was actually dancing with some students, and that made local news, and it's, I don't know, a really great activity that I think embodies the heart of DHS and how we really like to come together as a community and support each other's strengths. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, can you talk about, you know, as we talk about effective communication, probably one of the most important things that we have to talk about is relationships, right? And so can you talk about the relationship that your student council has with your administration and, and how that has helped or hurt uh, the things that you are trying to accomplish? Yeah, uh, we have a great relationship with our administration and that for that, I am incredibly grateful. I know going to other leadership conferences throughout the years, some schools aren't as fortunate to have uh, administra admin or administration who really want to collaborate with us as much as we do at DHS. Like I mentioned, the main people we communicate with are our principal, Mr. Hurl, and our athletic director, who actually recently went from DHS, DHS athletic director to our district-wide athletic director. However, he loves student council so much, and he loves working with us so much that he's kind of continued to hold on to DHS student council. Um, and it's relationships like that. It's meeting with our admin whenever we have new ideas and to get approved and to see what they like, what they want to see from us and really keeping that connection alive and not just starting the year and being like, oh, you want inclusive events? Okay, bye. Like we'll make inclusive events. It's always talking to them throughout the year and creating that relationship that they really um, love to see. I think another thing that we do really well is we also try to involve admin with the rest of our students. So one of the events that we do is pizza with the principal, which is generally about a monthly thing where we buy pizza, people come, it's, there's a topic already designed, the principal maybe shares about a grading policy or about some event that they want to see at the school and they really get to have a conversation with our admin and by creating that gateway i think dhs as a whole feels more connected and that big scary principal figure that you only see at the front door um, in mornings becomes a person and becomes somebody that people can relate to and that's really important in high school I absolutely agree absolutely agree uh, okay, so let's do this before we before we get out. We got a couple of things to do, but before we end with Jade and Jade, you did a fantastic job. What I need you to do is turn on your camera if you can, because we want to see your smiling face before we we let everybody go and give us any final thoughts, if you would, on your topic. Yeah. Okay. Um, thank you so much for everybody coming, and I'm so sorry that my mic didn't work perfect, but. We got through it. Um, being a leader is all about communication and it's all about building relationships. And I think if you are constantly as a leader seeking development and seeking improvement, especially in your communication ability, you are gonna be a rock star. You're gonna to continue to develop. You're gonna be the amazing student leader that you are and that you can grow into. And yeah, my words of wisdom are just continue learning, continue growing, and the world is your oyster. And that is effective communication at its best. Way to go, kid. Way to go. And if you, if you think that's good, some snaps or, or a clap or whatever you've got for Jade, that was a great job, kid. Um, so let's, let's, one, I want to thank you for doing that. So really appreciate you stepping in and, and really owning that. Um, and, and all that other stuff aside, whatever. It's all good, right? I see some claps coming in. I see you have some smiling faces, so great job. Uh, let me, let me, I see Jonathan. Jonathan, you are here. And guess what? You and Walker Bargman uh, from Eagle Ridge Academy, our state rep, are presenting next week. So you wanna give us a quick, uh, a little bit about what you're presenting on. I know it's student voice, but talk us through it. Um, give us the pitch, we're coming back. Uh, yes, so Walker and I are super excited for next week. Please join that webinar. We have some really great things planned. Uh, we're just talking about 
student voice and how we can engage kind of in uh, not only our student community, but also our community as a whole and kind of promoting these ideas of diversity and topics such as that. So it's super important and we would love for you to stop by. And you were on at four o'clock this time next week, right? Yes, I believe that's correct. Awesome, thank you. Okay, so viewers, check this out. We've got a couple of things going. One, shout out to, to Jade from Durango, Effective Communication, keep it in mind. You see her contact info, reach out to her on that and any other thing related to student leadership. And of course, her advisor is here. They are a national gold council of excellence year after year after year, which means they know what they're doing. So reach out and talk to them. All right. Um, coming up next week, we're excited to have Jonathan Walker present on student voice. Um, so be here four o'clock and bring a friend. Maybe we should do a drawing next time for some gift cards or something cool, right? Some chassis gear or something. I don't know. Bring a friend, tune in. These are all about you guys, for you guys. And, and hopefully while we're in this um, in this crazy world of 2020, we can, we can still grow our leadership and help our campuses uh, by growing each and every one of us. Don't forget, uh, tomorrow night uh, at, at, at 4 p.m., I'm sorry, at 4 tomorrow, we have our advisor presentation. And our advisor is Kirsten Peterson from uh, Highlands High School. I believe, and she is presenting on inclusion of students with disabilities and leadership. So if you're thinking about starting a program or you want to continue to grow the program you have as it relates to inclusion of students with disabilities, then tune in tomorrow. If you don't have that link, talk to your advisor. If you don't have that link, reach out to Chassa and they'll get you hooked up so you can join us tomorrow um, at four o'clock. But otherwise, uh, Whitney, correct me if I'm wrong, we're on it at what time for student presentations next Tuesday? I believe it was six. Uh, I think six. most of the students are going at six. Yep. Six. So, so just like tonight. Six. Okay. All right. So yep. always Tuesdays right here um, for student presentations. If you are a student out there who wants to present, again, reach out to Whitney at Chassa. It's WCAVE, C A V E, at Chassa.org, and she will get you through the process of how to be a presenter. Remember, we can't help each other if we don't know what's going on. So uh, again, Jade, awesome job. Jonathan, looking forward to you guys next week. Whitney and Justin over at Chassa, thank you for the work that you do in making all this happen. Much love and good luck with things that are going on with sports. Dale, as an advisor, thanks for being here, supporting your very own Jade Pruitt. And to everyone, stay safe out there. Keep masks up, social distance, wash your hands, and let's stay safe. Good night. See you, Rashawn. All right, man. Much love. Thank you. Good seeing you, man. I miss you. Yeah, man. We need to do this. Yeah. It's a leadership thing.